This is going to be a super fun one to talk about. I want to share with you three really practical ways that you can actually change and rewire your unconscious mind. This is so important when we're talking about manifestation because do you guys remember when The Secret came out and the whole movie was, or the documentary was about, well, just change your thoughts, just change your thoughts. And a lot of people found that it didn't work. So let's talk about that first. Why just changing your thoughts doesn't work. Why it's important to actually change and rewire and reprogram your unconscious mind. And then at the end, I'll share with you those three ways that you can get started doing that so that you can actually manifest the things that you want most. And why is manifesting the things that you want most really, really, really important? It's from my opinion, the way that I see it is that when you're manifesting the things that you want most, if you have a deep desire to experience something in your life, it's not selfish. It can feel selfish from one perspective, but let's, let's expand that and look at it from a little bit of a different perspective. When you really, really desire something, what that really is, is you, it's almost like your soul, so to speak, is knowing that when you call that thing into your life, you're actually going to experience the most spiritual expansion in the process of attaining or getting that thing. So quite typically when you desire something a lot, it's because you have the most amount of unconscious blocks to get there. And when you hit up against those unconscious blocks internally and externally, you have the opportunity to heal those unconscious blocks back into wholeness, which is essentially what our hearts, our nervous system, our minds, the universe at large is always moving towards. It's always moving towards wholeness and expansion. So when you go after a desire, there's kind of like this underlying spiritual current of really divine expansion. Oh, thank you. That's also happening in that movement of going towards something that you desire. So that was a little bit of a segue, but it's so important to, to change your unconscious mind going back to the secret and why that doesn't work because your conscious mind is only 5%, maybe even 1%. I've heard some neuroscientists say, but let's go with 5%, 5% of the conglomeration of who you really are. We have other areas of our minds that actually have access to way more information and are actually running the show behind the surface. So we have these three minds. At the very core, we have our reptile mind. This is the paleocortex. This is like a lot of our fight or flight, a lot of our fear response, a lot of survival. The paleocortex basically says like, can I, can I eat it? Can I fuck it? Or is it going to kill me? Right? Is it a friend or is it a foe? It's always kind of searching for basically those categories, right? And what that does is that has the first impulse that then sends up to the next part of your mind, which is your limbic system. This is your emotional body and your emotional body is actually the bridge between the paleocortex, your reptilian brain, your innermost unconscious mind and your neocortex, which is your conscious mind. This is where our thoughts, our perceivable thoughts occur. When you tap into the emotional body or the limbic system, it gives you access to the programming of your deepest unconscious mind. And that's what we're going to be. Yes, I will save this. It'll be an IGTV. So the emotional body, it gives you access to your deepest, most unconscious mind, your reptile brain. And you really need to actually be changing at the deepest level, if you want to manifest and call in those desires, because a lot of times that's where our blocks occur. So our blocks happen usually between the ages of zero and seven. Your unconscious mind is, is pretty formed by the age of seven. However, it continues to develop until about the age of, I'm pretty sure it's 25 or 27 for men and maybe just a couple years earlier than that for women. But let's just say between the ages of zero and seven, like when you reach seven, your unconscious template of what you 
expect to experience in your life is formed. Now, the one of the biggest differences between your unconscious mind and your conscious mind is that your conscious mind exists in duality. It labels things as this is good and this is bad. This is right and this is wrong. I want this and I don't want this. Your unconscious mind has no concept of that duality. So if you have experienced a lot of abuse or a lot of trauma or a lot of negativity in your earlier childhood years, the mind is literally like this open program that's just downloading information. There's no filter when you're really, really young to say like, wow, this doesn't feel good. I don't want to experience this again. It literally just, you can imagine like your unconscious mind is just typing. Okay, well, this must be how reality is. This must be how relationships are. This must be what relationships feel like. This must be what money is like. This must be, right? So it's literally just taking notes. It's in this total, almost like surrender exalted state of just downloading whatever information is in your perceivable reality between the ages ages of zero and seven. So that is what becomes your template. That is what becomes normal. And if you survive past the age of seven, your unconscious mind goes, great. Well, we survived. That's the only thing it really cares about at the deepest reptilian level is can I survive? So if you did survive, which if you're watching this, you, you did survive past the age of seven, then your unconscious mind goes, okay, well, I'll just repeat that because it'll ensure my survival. And then we play out these patterns throughout our entire life well into adulthood and then tying that back into the secret then we we see something like the secret and the secret is like well just change your thoughts and we're like okay if we're on the spiritual path like cool i can just change my thoughts and then we try to just change our thoughts and we we don't get the results in our life this is because you're only trying to change at that outermost level the neocortex which does not control the bulk of your reality. You actually have to change your unconscious mind and align that to your desires. When your unconscious mind and your conscious mind are both aligned in the same direction, then 100% of you is on the same page and you can keep moving forward forward with what it is that you want to create. And it is a process. There, there's a whole other <laughs> realm of information I'd love to share with you, and I'll just go into it super briefly, around when you're on this process of changing your unconscious mind, you really got to adopt the mindset that it's not about the end result. If you think it's just about the end result, you're kind of missing the point. It's the process of healing these blocks. It's the process of expansion that is really why we're here in our human bodies is to experience that kind of dualistic expansion from small and enclosed and all of these programs to like, oh, whew, and we get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's a really beautiful process. When you align to biochemically, when you align to it being about the process, biochemically what that does is it activates your dopamine system and dopamine is the thing that will continue going so even when it gets hard because you're it's going to get hard right when you're moving towards your manifestations again it's there because there's the most amount of blocks it's going to be hard right you're you, this isn't going to be an upward line of success it's going to be like oh okay now this block this block if you're focusing on the process and you're feeling really really good around the process and around the expansion it's going to keep you going because dopamine is what keeps you going okay when you focus on the end result biochemically it does something different and you're going to lose all willpower you're going to lose all faith that it's ever going to happen for you. So really, really focus on the process. Okay. So that was quite an introduction. I'm going to get into the three ways that you can change your unconscious mind. The first one is body awareness. And this is also can be somatic work. This can be somatic experiencing. Soma, the root of somatic quite simply means mind body connection. When we talked about the three brains, remember the middle brain is your emotional body or your limbic system. This is the bridge between your conscious mind and your unconscious mind. And your emotional body never lies to you. 
It never, never lies to you. It, it's insane to me how much misinformation around emotions, experience in our society, we learn and experience in our society because people don't know what the fuck to do with our emotions. We get a bad emotion and we're like, oh my God, that shouldn't be there. Or, you know, we get a good emotion, we try to hold on to it. And emotions are movement. It's, it's energy in motion. They're always flowing and they're always there for some reason. Your job as a, as a conscious being is not to try to control and manipulate your emotions. It's quite simply to be present with them so that you can reveal and unpack what your emotions are actually there for. There's two things, two things only that your emotions are ever there for, okay? The first one is that your emotions are there to let you know of a truth that you have that you're in resistance to or of something that you have a block to that is ready to be healed and revealed, which will usually take you into some kind of inner child work or expansion work. So body awareness, when you're changing your unconscious mind is super important because let's say you want to manifest and call in this beautiful, loving relationship. The first impression that you have when you think of that relationship or insert whatever it is that you want to manifest, I want you to tune into your body and notice how your body reacts to that. If you are expanded and excited about calling in that new relationship, that usually means that you have a very positive feeling, a very positive vibration relative to that. But more typically what happens when it's the trickier things to manifest is that there's a feeling of desire. There's also usually this feeling of ick. Like there's this feeling of like, oh, I can't do that. I can't have that. It's too hard. It's never going to happen for me. It's all of that. Now I'm speaking it from my conscious mind, but what I want you to do is to start separating out the thoughts that you have about the feeling <laughs> that you have relative to what you want. That was very wordy, sorry. And actually start paying attention to your body because your thoughts are not true. Remember, your thoughts, your conscious mind is the least to know and the last informed. They're not true. Your conscious mind's job is to rationalize everything. It's to make a reason for everything. That's just what it does. And it will make shit up all the time. So don't believe anything your mind says what you wanna do is drop into your body. So when you think about, okay, I wanna manifest like this beautiful relationship and you feel this ick feeling, where do you feel it in your body? It's literally quite simply that location of your neurology, of your energy center in your body that has the block. In typical secret, the secret manifestation work, it's like, well, don't feel that, don't go there because then you're gonna create more of it. No, no, definitely go there. Definitely focus on where you feel the ick and where you feel the block because then you can do the emotional work around it to reveal that block and heal that block because you can't change something that you don't have awareness around, okay? It's almost like your body goes, you know, when you want something and you set that intention and then it brings up this negative feeling around it, your body's like, great, cool, we want that too. And it hands you this ick, uncomfortable feeling on a silver platter. And it's like, this is what needs to be healed. Like this, this is it. So body awareness is a huge part of changing your unconscious mind. You have to start bringing your conscious mind into your unconscious mind via the uncomfortable sensations in your body and sit with those. I swear awareness heals so much of it. The question becomes how willing are you to sit with that uncomfortable feeling indefinitely knowing that it will eventually change because emotions are just energy and motion. The only time emotions get stuck is when you resist them. That's it. Okay, so let's go on to number two. The second one is through hypnosis. When we're talking about changing the unconscious mind, hypnosis is a very, very powerful tool to radically change your unconscious mind. Why? Because remember when I was talking about with the ages of zero and seven, like you're just, you're downloading and programming everything into your unconscious mind and there's no bias. When you're in a state of hypnosis, the exact same thing occurs. Your brainwave state changes to that of 
a child between the ages of zero and seven, and it starts becoming very susceptible. It starts becoming very programmable. It starts becoming very open to new ideas and new information. Hypnosis is not this thing that's like where, you know, you dangle a a chain and like you go into hypnosis. No, no, no. Hypnosis is quite simply a very deep state of relaxation where you're so much out of fight or flight. You're so relaxed that your mind opens up and changes its brainwave state. It's not difficult to get into a state of hypnosis. It's something that I do for people all the time. It's something that I do for myself all the time. I probably go into a state of hypnosis actively and consciously every day and reprogram what I want into my reality, which actually leads me to number three. The third way to change your unconscious mind is repetition, okay? Repetition, repetition, repetition. The way that our unconscious mind works is on a feedback loop. So if you just do it once, if you just do the hypnosis once, if you just tune into your body once, it's literally like going to the gym and working out for two hours and then just being like, well, I'm going to be fit for life. No, that's not it. It's repetition. You've got to go to the gym every day or you've got to work out every day. You've got, you've got to do it every single day because there's this feedback loop with our unconscious mind, the the neural pathways of our unconscious mind, they're so set in stone that they just, you know, one trigger happens and it goes boop, 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 boop along the same pathway. And I like to kind of imagine it like a river that is running through a valley. It rains, all the rain is gonna go into that river and it's gonna go in this same pattern. So when you're changing your unconscious mind, you need repetition, you need hypnosis, and you need the awareness of where to dig out a new river. And that's really what it is when you're changing your unconscious mind is you're bringing your conscious awareness into where do I wanna make this change in the river, how can I start digging it? And how can I start digging it in a way that's going to be easier than just, you know, digging with a spoon. So it's kind of like if you're changing just your thoughts, you have like a little tiny spoon and you're trying to dig out a new river. When you add in hypnosis and you add in repetition, particularly those two together, then all of a sudden you have some massive power tool and you really start making strides. When you start making strides, then that's how you change your reality because you've manifested a new river. So I, I like that analogy. It's it's just an easy way to think about our neurology and our unconscious mind. So that is the information I have for you. If you want to take this a step further, I do offer free 30-minute consultation calls with me where we can talk about how this might work for you, how you might be able to apply this into your life. And I, I want to mention this because I'm doing something really, really cool now that I'm really excited about. And it was born from actually me creating a hypnosis for myself that I started listening to every single day. And I kid you not, the changes in my life were mind blowing. Like every single day I was like, oh my gosh, that, that, that was exactly from my hypnosis. And then another thing would happen, another synchronicity. And it was just like synchronicity on top of synchronicity on top of synchronicity was like, what? I, I Like it blew my mind. And so what I started doing for some of my clients is that I had a personal session with them and really tap into their neurology, figure out where their neural pathways are because the nature of the unconscious mind is that it's unconscious. You don't have conscious awareness of it yet. So somebody trained like me, I can watch the way you talk. I can watch your eye accessing cues. I can watch your hand motions. I can watch your body language, right? I can pick up your neurology throughout my neurology and I can really get this blueprint of kind of map out your unconscious mind. And then what I do from there is that I create a personalized hypnosis for you. I record it in this magical way that goes through these three things. So we have the body awareness in the hypnosis, but obviously there's the hypnosis part of it. That's pretty self-explanatory. And then the repetition, because you have it your, it's yours. Like you have that file. So you listen to it every day. And the way that I treat it is kind of like a prescription. Like you go to a doctor and they're like, oh, okay, well you have this, whatever illness or you have this infection, like take this prescription every day for a week and then go down to like a couple times a week or whatever. So it's the same thing with hypnosis. I tune into what your neurology and your unconscious mind needs. And I give you a plan in order to boost that change in your unconscious mind the very most. It's, it's a phenomenal process. Again, like the synchronicities in my life are 
they're they're radical like every day they're mind-blowing and i actually have that in my hypnosis like i say that in my hypnosis because i'm in a programmable state and i'd like that to be my reality because cool when you get to choose your reality you get to choose anything you want so might as well choose the coolest thing ever and that's the information that i get from you program that into the reality give you the prescription and then you listen to it every day so if that sounds awesome for you definitely go ahead and book that call the link is in my bio so you go to my bio click the link and it's the very first button it says like book a consultation call with me we can chat about that we can chat about some of the other programs that i offer i work with women with eating disorders i have another program the authenticity portal which is aligning to your true authenticity physically with food with potty with all of that kind of stuff and then we go into the depths of emotional health which i love and emotional mastery and then we go into spiritual which is more around manifestation intuition all of that kind of stuff i also offer one-on-one sessions so there, there's a whole lot of things we could talk about but i'm gonna wrap it up you're so welcome i appreciate you all being here and i'll talk to you soon